In this episode, we're unraveling the magic behind HTMX that allows us to build dynamic and responsive web applications effortlessly, coupled with the robust and efficient back-end capabilities of Golang. As a back-end developer, I dislike using JavaScript in the HTML pages I build. Libraries like HTMX come to the rescue. HTMX breathes life into your HTML, enabling it to do more with less. Imagine sending and receiving data, updating content, and even swapping out entire sections of your page without writing complex JavaScript. That's HTMX. It extends HTML through custom attributes, making your pages highly interactive with minimal effort. Let's see how it works. Let's say... We have a server and a client. The server responds to the client's request with an HTML response. Usually, a web page has many components and interacts with the server using AJAX requests. Alternatively, HTMX allows us to make AJAX requests directly from our HTML markup using its attributes. When a user interacts with an element, like clicking a button or submitting a form, HTMX makes an asynchronous request to the server without reloading the page. Upon receiving a response, HTMX seamlessly updates the specified part of the web page. This is possible through its smart DOM swapping capability, where only parts of the page that need updating are refreshed, enhancing your application speed and user experience. On the client side, the browser downloads the HTMX engine and executes the JavaScript code to make sense of HTMX markup. With this understanding, let's use this Jin-based project to learn how HTMX can be used. This app simulates storing notes for the user. This page of the app is split into two parts. The right-hand side shows the list of notes. On the left-hand side, we have a form that helps us add a new note. On submitting the form, we intend to add the note at the top of the list. Let's look at the code. In the main.go file, the Jin server is configured to run on the default port, 8080. There is only one route. This is the handler function. Let us see what is going on in this handler function. We have a static list of notes here for simplicity. Then we have a HTML renderer. This is the view template used. Here, the list of notes is sent to the view. Let's have a look at the view. We are using Bootstrap for this app here. We have added the CSS for this purpose. This is the first column of the home page. It contains the form. In the second column, we have a list of notes. Here, we loop over the notes sent by the handler. For each note, we create a card. Here and here, we put the attributes of the note. We missed discussing the note model. It is defined here. It has two fields, name and content. In a web app, if we want to update the list of notes on submitting the form, usually this is done with an AJAX request, but we will use HTMX. Let's make changes to the form. We will configure HTMX attributes for this purpose.
For submitting this form, we will need a post HTTP request to submit the form. Let's first create a handler for the request. Here we have a structure to read the form data. This structure is read into this variable by using JIN's bind functionality. For now we will render the note in HTML format. Status would be accepted. We define a new view here, which we will implement shortly. This view needs the name and the content of the note. We pass the data here. Let's create this view. Eventually, we want to add this list item dynamically to the view. Let's copy this in our new view. Fix the indentation and give the name to the template. Now add the root in the JIN configuration. This would be a POST request. Here is the path and the handler. Let's try this out. Run the server. Fill in the fields and submit the form. And we get 404. The app is posting on slash notes and in the routes we have configured slash note. Let's fix this. Restart the server. Now it renders the note item. It does not show in the card format as Bootstrap is not used in this view. In the form, this is the API we call with POST method. As we have seen, the form submission is not using AJAX. Now we will use HTMX attributes to make the submission asynchronous. On the documentation of HTMX, let's go to Triggers. To do a post, we will use HX post attribute. Let's replace action with HX post. This does post HTTP request on slash notes. We no longer need the method attribute. We need another attribute, HX target, to load the response in an HTML element. Let's see how to use it. Here, the target is set to search results, which is the ID of the element here. This means the response alters this element that is specified in the HX target attribute. We want to make changes to the list of notes in this element. The ID of this element is card list. Let's specify this ID in HX target like this. To make changes in the list of notes, we need to specify how we want to make changes. For this, we need HX swap attribute. Let's refer to the documentation again. We can replace inner HTML or outer HTML. We can add elements at the beginning of the element with after begin. There are many more. Let's use after begin, as we want to add the new note at the top. We should have added HTMX JavaScript in the header. Go to installation in the documentation.
Let's copy this from here and add to the header. Run the server. Let's submit. As expected, it added the note at the top. Add another note and it works as well. Now let's replace the whole list. We will use inner HTML. Restart the server. It works. The whole list is replaced. This is how HTMX works. Let's undo this change. We have some repeated code. This HTML element is there in the note.html file as well. We will use this view as a sub-view on the index page. We can do so by using the template keyword. Let's quickly check if the app is working. Yes, it works as before. In the real-world application, on submission of the form, there could be some delay in interacting with the database or in transmission. It would be great if we could show a spinner on submission. We will simulate delay by adding a sleep for a couple of seconds here in the handler function. HTMX provides request indicators that let us add indications like spinner on buttons. It can be specified with HX indicator attribute. This takes the ID of the indicator element. Here is the indicator element specified, which is an image. Since we are using Bootstrap in our application, we can use this kind of button. Let's copy this button code. Replace the button with this code. We need to add the HTMX indicator class to the span element as this specifies the spinner. Let's break this element into multiple lines for better readability. We need an ID for the spinner. Let's call it spinner itself. Next we specify the HTMX indicator attribute in the form to the spinner element. Let's look at the button once more. The type of the button should be Submit. Remove the disabled. Let's try the application now. On submission of the form we see this spinner for a couple of seconds. As the server responds, the note is added to the list. And there you have it. A deep dive into creating dynamic web applications with HTMX and Golang. Combining HTMX's front-end magic and Golang's back-end strength opens up a new world of web development possibilities.
Dive in, experiment, and watch your web applications transform. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe for more videos.